Hey, Queens, did you ever feel like things took a turn when you had sex with a guy? Did you ever feel like disappointed or just things didn't go the way you wanted? Maybe he lost interest. Maybe he, he was more distant. Maybe he ghosted you altogether. He faded out. Did you ever regret having sex with a guy when you were dating him? Well, today we're going to be talking about this whole topic again. And we're going to be discussing uh, timing, right? When is the right timing uh, to, you know, get so close, close with a guy? One of our dear subscribers, she she said, you know what, this is a slap on the face because he just ghosted me in one of my other sex videos. I think it was the one um, about free sex. And she says, well, at some point you're going to end up having sex with the guy one day or another. And... She's like, at what point do you have sex with him without him either going away or becoming cold or whatever, right? So we're going to be unpacking this. So as I've said before, sex is, I would say, the, the single number one cause of issues in relationships these days but I tend to say it's like number three because number one is when you're out dating and you have no intention you're you have zero confidence about your desires you don't really know what you want and you're just out there to have fun fun of course obviously the fun turns into a train wreck a lot of the times if not 99% of the times when you're doing that. So the number two cause is that you are going out with men that don't really see you as their dream woman. Like you're not the one for him. Even if he's the one for you, you're not the one for him. So you continue to go out with guys that are not that into you. And third is just having sex with them when you shouldn't be having sex with them. Or you know what? I'm not anyone to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. You are obviously a grown up and fully accountable for what you do and the consequences of that. But the point of all these videos is for you to understand human nature, right? Because you're not a floating spirit. And critically think, once you understand your human nature and his human nature, and think what's in the best interest for you in the long term. The more animal we are, the more we go with our instant animal instinct and go for the instant gratification. I've talked about that. So... Let's break it down. What are the three main kinds of reasons of why you keep having sex with randoms? And randoms are people you are dating. Yeah, they are randoms. People you are dating are, they're no one. They're people you are dating, people you're getting to know. Boyfriends are also randoms. This special little boy, right, that is your friend with benefits, he's also no one. He's just the guy out there that, did he tell you he wanted to spend the rest of his life with you and come with a ring? Did he make you his wife? Right? And I'll have a separate video coming up next week about marriage again because I think women are really really confused about what marriage is supposed to be right so 
separate topic. So you keep having sex with randoms and it backfires pretty much 99% of the time at some point in time, whether it be three months from now, whether it be three years from now, because you walked out empty handed and with a huge load of baggage. So number one, the cool girl syndrome. So I can't help but remember this one girl. Well, she was not a girl. She was freaking 40, whom was, of course, chronically single. And she kept coming to me with, you know, her stories. And, you know, of course, she wanted to know my take, right? And I did bring up the topic about sex. Because, you know, she had a thing, as we all do, for that. And she said, oh, and you know what? No, no, no. It's, I, it's just that I like sex. You know, most women, they don't like sex. Like, I am so cool because I like having sex. And most women don't. That's why, you know, they have issues with this topic because they don't really know how to, like, come when they're having sex. So I'm so cool. Because, you know, each time I have sex, I can come. And I love sex and other women don't. <laughs> I swear. I swear this is this this was her literally. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> fast forward five years from now, like five fast forward five or six years, she's still single. Right? Because she loves sex and other women don't. So she likes sex too much. Oh, okay. I guess other people don't. Okay. Right? So that's part of one iteration of the cool girl syndrome. She's so good at sex. She can make all the guys come. She's so good in bed. So the badge of honor that they're so good in bed. They even have clubs and some of them even teach this as part of their entourage teach younger women how to give the best hand jobs and how to be the best in bed so cool but they get up you know they end up getting dumped over and over and over and chronically single okay so that's one iteration. Another iteration of the cool girl syndrome is you do it because everyone else does it. So you would be totally uncool to do something different, to follow your own code of conduct, to follow your actual intuition rather than your animal instinct. So it's a peer pressure. There was somebody in the comments that said, you know what? I so agree with what you're saying about sex. I, I don't really want to do it, but I kind of do it anyway, sort of because if I don't do it, I'm going to be weird. I'm going to be like just stupid. Or I don't know if that's the second number, but it's a fear of him leaving. If you don't have sex with him, then somebody else will. Right? So you are sort of being a pick me. Cool girl because, you know, you're going with the flow or doing what everybody else is doing. And you're too afraid, you know, because nice girl syndrome and cool girl syndrome is kind of the same with a different outfit. So, yeah, you're just afraid that if you don't, 
then some other girl will and you're like well no right and you're like yeah good going just doing what everyone else is doing how's that working for you so but these girls and, and you know not to judge anyone right I think and you you know I've said this before we've kind of all been there I too was 20 years old or 19 and I too went to university and you know like was young and stupid we've all been there if you're 19 if you're 20 sure you have that excuse that you're young and silly but when you're 40 in your 30s what excuse do you have right so anyway that's you with fear right fear of him going away another point here another type of situation is the act i've talked about it in another video like the sex addiction video so when there's an actual like sex addiction so n nobody likes to even think of themselves as even remotely being addicted like no like i kid you not not anyone watching this video would admit to say or like you know on a conscious level that there's an addiction to sex not just the sex itself but the thrill of it the thrill of someone new the thrill of the chemical high you know the uh dopamine hit the endorphins the oxytocin vasopressin all this stuff that comes with the hormonal high and the intoxicated state that it gives you so if you are a thrill seeker you love those butterflies those butterflies between your legs you love that and I mean, everybody else does, you know, but I think some people actually, the the thrill seeking of it is, is a true addiction, right? Like the wanting that high and you know, the, the whole uh, porn and all of that. <laughs> so, and that goes hand in hand with the next one the next one is the girl that will tell you i just like it i just feel like doing it so i'm going out i'm having a good time i feel like doing it i think it's fine i think it's okay i see nothing wrong with that well when you're doing something you like right there's a following way to look at it you know, I really like eating cake for breakfast. I also like having champagne for breakfast. And I also like having wine and champagne and pizza and maybe cocaine, right? Like, maybe I like all these things. And maybe I so happen to, to like doing it daily. Maybe I like doing it for breakfast. Maybe I like doing it for lunch. I just like it. I just feel like it. <laughs> or how about when, you know, every dime that I earn, I spend it in designer items, designer bags. I don't invest anything. I, I just spend all my money in like designer bags and alcohol and and just the things that I really like. So if your answer is because I like it, because I want to, just like I want to eat my vodka for breakfast every single day, you know, welcome to no judgment, but no queen goes out there with 
without any self-control, without any strategy, without any plan, right? You know, queens, they are restrained. They are very restrained. Restrained to what? To their animal instincts. The more conscious and highly evolved you are, the less you will give in to your animal instincts because you want it right now. The more successful you are, the more you will think about the end game, the long game, the long-term strategy and long-term thinking that, you know, that will serve you in the long run. Successful people are not thinking about what is in this instant making them feel pleasure. Maybe when you've accomplished every single goal that you have, pleasure of this kind, maybe it has a place there, right? So going back to the question of what is the timing of having sex? Well, of course, I'm not going to give you the absolute answer because all the queens that are in this channel and in my coaching practice, they are critical thinkers that take full accountability for themselves and can figure this out themselves. But I'm going to tell you the human nature pieces for you to critically think. So when a man has sex with you, he can immediately think straight. Before that, he is in a hypnotic state. He's hypnotized by you. If by the time you had sex with him, he is not madly in love with you, he does not see you as his dream woman, and he does not see his life with you, and he does not want his life with you, aka there's no ring, there's no wedding date, there's no real commitment. That is a real commitment. Words, you could fucking talk your my ears out for all I fucking care. I don't care about your words. I care about what's happening here. What are you doing for me? What's, you know? How are you proving yourself to me? How are you showing me you're the one? And without you wanting to spend your life with me and me being in that category. And really, you know, having the tangible, the tangible of it. I'm not going there. Why? Because by the time we do it, you're going to be waking up into your five senses and be like, mm, well, I don't know. Oh, and if you thought you can convince him, if you thought because you're a great fuck, he's going to be more into you, girl, you are so mistaken and you're in for a rude awakening because good sex, like the girls that I talked about, you know, in the first part of this video that, you know, the cool girls that think because they're so good in bed, they're going to get anywhere. They're chronically single and chronically dumped. So if, if you're in for that risk, go for it. You want that for yourself? Go for it. Right? Your perceived value, I'm not saying your intrinsic value, even intrinsic value, because how do you value yourself, right? What do you require for a man to have, for a man to have your life force energy? Again, what do you require, right? So I want you to make that call. And your perceived value to him really, really tanks. 
you're going from oh my god like this chick right to like oh like he'll think straight he'll think rational after for the ones that go on and have a you know a whirlwind like for a few months or even a couple years, not even a year and a half, couple, couple years max. Even for the ones that get there, I'm telling you, the fallout, the fallout can be rough. Very, very rough. And that's when you hear all of those like, oh, you know, back and forth, back and forth, like can't leave him and can't move on and blah, blah, blah. So yeah for the girl who asked when is the right timing i want you to tell me when is the right timing when you know how the human nature of men and yourself work right because the minute you have sex with him you are not thinking straight anymore you are hypnotized you are intoxicated and under the influence of all the hormones, you're in that high. You will not be able to think straight. So if you want that for yourself, right, then go for it. Have fun. And then deal with the fallout and the aftermath and the consequences. And on goes the hookup cycle. So anyway, which category are you falling in? And... I invite you to be the 1%, to be the 1% girl that dares to not do what everyone else is doing, who dares to have a code of conduct, and who's not afraid to be alone. Oh, and trust me, you won't be alone for long. But you're not afraid to say no. And you're not afraid of that guy going away because you said no. Mm -hmm. So I invite you to be that 1% that is thinking long-term. That is playing the end game. So yeah, that's it for now, queens. And yeah, I'll let me know in the comments what you think about this topic and what your experience has been and yeah i'll talk to you later